Today we will discuss about the problems which are usually faced while liquid injectable bulk manufacturing. So liquid injectable bulk manufacturing involves multiple steps, multiple materials and different characteristics. So how this impacts or how this affects or how it makes or creates problem while manufacturing liquid injectables let's discuss. So I will be discussing four or five important things such as types of materials, material addition speed, pH adjustment, temperature range and finally the volume makeup. So please watch my full video to understand better. So we will start with the types of material. So in liquid injectable manufacturing we will have solid materials as well as liquid materials. In solid materials with API and other excipients like for example API can be fluffy, can be sticky, can be hygroscopic. So this, this poses certain amount of problems while we have to add the material inside the vessel into the WFI or the solvents which is there. So what happens with the fluffy material that if you add it, it will usually keep floating onto the water surface and it will not easily get dissolved. So how to, how to overcome this material, this issue if you have fluffy material as an API or an excipient. So what you can do, you can slowly in a very little little quantity, you can add while continuous stirring the solvent or the WFI. So you keep stirring the WFI at slow space, not very turbulent so that it will create, uh, turbulent will not help the material to easily disperse. Slow stirring and slow addition of material and make sure that you are not adding an entire bulk of material to one single space or at, at a time. Small small quantity scattered over the entire surface of the vessel. It will help better to scatter the material to better dissolve the fluffy material. So this is one of the issue. Similarly if you have hygroscopic material, make sure that you minimize the product exposure to the atmosphere just before addition you open the open the container open the bag and start adding sticky material yes of course you need special uh, spatulas or tools to drag out all the materials from the container and that way you can you can overcome the problem so you, you need to be prepared with all the utensils you need for such manufacturing process so this is about type of material now coming to the speed of addition so sometimes it, uh, uh, the BMR will tell add slowly, add gradually, add carefully. But what does it exactly mean? So first we need to understand that what slow additions means. For example, if I have 250 gram of material and my BMR tells me slowly add 250 gram of material within 30 minutes. So how can I scatter it? How can I divide it? For example, somebody will add 50 gram at once, then wait for 10 minutes or 5 minutes, then again add 50 gram, then wait for 10 minutes, add 50 gram. That way, he will scatter, or he will divide the 250 gram material in 30 minutes of spawn. But it is the exact way of, or it is the proper way of addition? Maybe not. So, you need to understand what sort of material and what do you mean by slow addition. So slow addition sometimes required because material may not be easily soluble. It is sparingly soluble, it requires more time to dissolve. So slow addition means that you have to add material, little material, allow it to disperse. Then again add little material, allow it to disperse and see how it goes. So with this small small quantity added, every minute will help better than adding 50 gram at once and waiting for the 10 minutes. So this is how we can understand better what slow addition means. Also, if it is a new product and you are not very sure, you can you can discuss with the R&D guys that how to best manufacture this product, how to best add the material. What do you mean exactly mean by slow addition? How how I have to add? So you can discuss with R&D guys. They they'll able to help you that what they mean by slow addition and it is always better to keep one person from the R&D when you are first time manufacturing any new product. So this is how slow addition works. Same goes with the liquid API or liquid excipient also when you mean slow then what exactly slow means like you have to pour little little quantity or you have to continuously keep, keep pouring at very slow rate. So this you need to understand and act by 
closely working with the project development team or r and d team so this this way we can overcome the material addition problems slow fast fast stirring slow stirring how to avoid frothing or splashing so this this all comes as a critical process parameters in batch manufacturing now coming to the temperature range so many products have some products are very simple that you have to collect water for injection at less than 25 degree or 20 between 20 to 25 degree and, and do all the additions at this temperature only but some products have different temperature range for example if it contains preservative like methyl paraben and propyl paraben then you need to take hot wfi may be 70 degrees 65 degrees or 80 degrees dissolve methyl paraben propyl paraben then gradually cool it down and then cool it down below 25 degree and then you can start your ap material addition including ap and excipients so if the product manufacturing steps involves such heating and cooling steps then you should have appropriate resources uh, maybe steam connection maybe hot water connection chill water connection appropriate resource and you need to exactly understand that what rate of cooling has to be applied for example from 60 degree to 25 degree in 30 minutes so how exactly you are going to bring down this temperature it cannot be it cannot be done that you all of sudden you apply chill water up to 28 degree and it will within 10 minutes come down from uh, for example 60 degree to 25 degree and then the material will reprecipitate or will crystallize so it should not occur so this should be exactly defined in your batch record that how exactly it has to be cooled you need to understand you need to talk to the development team or if your previous experiences you should define your batch record in such a way that it have exact same instruction exact instruction that how to cool down the material cool down the bulk in such cases so temperature raise sometimes plays very very important role uh, in batch manufacturing when especially it has heating steps and cooling steps so you need to perfectly understand that how these steps are to be followed basis that you can avoid problems and batch failures because of minor minor mistakes or minor misses during the batch manufacturing process so what next temperature control is one then other critical step is ph adjustment so in in injectable ph adjustment is very very crucial the set value of ph is very crucial because of the product development and because of compatibility with the body so ph adjustment there are three scenarios maybe one is you at all you don't need ph adjustment second scenario is that you have two ways of adjustment either you can add acid as well as alkali or base so that you can you can adjust ph both ways and there is um, sometimes there is only one way that you can only add acid or you can only add base there is no other, only one way of ph adjustment and fourth critical parameter in ph adjustment is sometimes the ph is very very narrow so when ph is very very narrow for ex, uh, say for example from 3.5 to 4.5 or 5 to 5.5 to 6 so if there is very narrow range of ph then it becomes very very critical that you perfectly understand that what sort of quantity how much quantity it will be required of acid or base and how to add How, how many minutes you have to stir after addition of acid or base you need to perfectly understand before you start the manufacturing process so usually it is very good idea to have that trend trend means that for this specific product how much ml of acid or base usually it takes to bring the ph within range if you have this trend data for example in a 50 liter batch if you need 250 ml of acid to set the ph then you can straight away at 200 ml and then you can add gradually at 10 ml or 5 ml to bring down the to to uh, make the ph as per the exact bit in between the range so if you have this trend data available then it helps you to understand better that how much quantity of acid or base will be required for ph adjustment in this specific product and you can do for each product 
of course for the new product you need to understand with r&d people r&d scientists that how much they used to add in at their level and how much will be the approximate quantity for this new product basis this data you will have an exact idea that for this batch my requirement of acid or base will be x ml so that you can start with certain quantity you don't have to start with 1 ml and 2 ml and keep adding keep adding you will have certain idea in your mind based on the development teams feedback and it should also become part of your batch record that this specific product ph adjustment will be done by this 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 steps this quantity first then after that this quantity and then you can finally fine tune to achieve the exact required ph this especially important when there is only one way of adjustment for example you can only acid a uh, acid so once the ph goes extreme down you cannot add base to bring it up in in such scenario this becomes very critical also when your ph range is very very narrow then also it becomes very very critical so you need to understand you need to have some approximate idea that how much quantity it will take and you need to add quantity exactly as per the uh, bmr or how you have concluded from the outcome of the product development report so this is we can fine tune your ph adjustment during batch manufacturing and finally one more point i will discuss is on the volume makeup so nowadays all the vessels comes with load cell so you usually make the volume by weight so in this case it is very very uh, critical that you derive the calculation exactly based on the specific gravity and all that so you you exactly know that how many kg of batch you have to manufacture and there is one problem with this method that sometimes the vessel the manufacturing vessels are mobile so they move from one room to another room or one manufacturing area to another manufacturing area and because of this movement this load cell gets disturbed so if you calibrate and then you move it then there might be some error into the calibration there might be some tolerance which will be not which will not give you the exactly 100% perfect weight output so if you are having such problem and this this you come to know once you manufacture batch batch and then as a result comes out as a lower as a or higher as and then you understand that there was a problem with the load cell i have many uh, i have seen many investigation because of load cell error the batch had a problem with the ss so when you have mobile vessels you should be very careful that you calibrate it perfectly it is always good to have an another second check for example dipstick or perfectly measured volume to be added like you you need water you have already have vessel but you measure it separately and then add this is especially critical when you are manufacturing product which is very critical very costly uh, which is having very low bulk volume and you need to precisely monitor what amount of uh, solvent or wfi goes in then you can separately measure and keep adding and keep double check so there are two three ways perfectly calibrated vessel you can always use a dip stick with calibration mark so you can cross check you will not miss out you will not add more volume more wfi more solvent in your product and third way is to measure the wfi quantity before adding and always cro- and cross check with the what weight is shown onto the hmi of the manufacturing vessel so this way you can overcome the problem with volume makeup so hope this small video will help you to understand what are the issues we usually face with the batch manufacturing and and you can act on it if you like you can subscribe to my channel if you have any queries you can write into the comment section thank you thank you very much for watching my full video